So what would you say the best comics you've read since, say, 1995? Oh, Astonishing X-Men. No. JLA? No. Daredevil? No. Ultimate Spider-Man? No. New Avengers? No. Final Crisis? No. Transmetropolitan? No. You got an answer. Yeah. Astro freaking City? This episode of iFanboy is brought to you by GoDaddy.com and Netflix.com. Fanboy, your comic book discussion show from the website ifanboy.com. I'm Josh Flanagan. That. And you have a date apparently to get to. Is Connor Kilpatrick. <laughs> I'm Connor Kilpatrick. And I'm Ron Richards. And I'm so excited today because we are talking about one of my all time favorite comic books, uh, Kirby CX Astro City. And it's a rare, uh, little known iFanboy fact Astro City is one of the few titles that all three of us all agree on. <laughs> Am like right? holy, am I right? Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Like without caveat. So I'm gonna tell you a little story. In the '90s, early '90s, um, Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross teamed up. And they did Marvels for Marvel, which is the great, you know, kind of painted story. Kind of put Alex Ross on the map. Yep. Um, put both of them on the map. Really. Put both of them on. Kurt Busiek was kicking around, but, but yeah, he was but, journeyman. Like, yeah. He put him on the. It, put, it kicked him up into yeah. the upper yeah. level. And. Um, Around 1995, um, I, at this point, I was reading all X-Men stuff, but I was getting into the image thing. And I saw a solicitation, and I just saw this image of the character Samaritan and the promo of Astro City. And I saw that it was drawn by Alex Ross and written by Kirby, the guys who did Marvels. I'm like, fantastic. I picked up the first issue of the miniseries that Image Comics put out, mm -hmm. and it kicked my ass. Yes. Yeah. It was so good. Basically, what happened was Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross collaborated, and they created a whole mess of characters. And Kurt Busiek imagined this whole separate alternative superhero universe centered around the city called Astro City, which is the city where all the superheroes kind of came in and out of. And sort of like how in, in Marvel, you know, New they're York. all in New yeah. York for some reason. Yeah. And what what I found really really fat, and, and this is good, this is a gushing episode, so I'm pausing the best. What I found really fascinating about it was that. Um, how many times have we read you know, Marvel and DC are so firmly planted stuff like that how many times have we read a new superhero character in I mean, a new, new universe Superman. Yeah, a new yeah. Superman, a new Superman yeah. uh, analogy yep or, or any of that, the, the, a universe of heroes. All this, you They're all it, terrible. You're like, yeah, whatever. This was so fully formed uh -huh. and so relatable and Fleshed and out. Fleshed out that from that first issue, it just it was just amazing. I knew this was going to be something to watch, and now here we are, almost 15 years later. Did you know that this is the only comic book series that I ever went back and bought every single issue from? Every back issue? I bought it because nice. this came out mostly, the first sort of two volumes were mostly out by the time I started reading comics again. Yeah. And I went back and I, I found every single issue through comic shops or, or eBay or whatever, and, yeah. I, and I have them all. Like, yeah. Also, a little known fact this image. The first image ever on iFanboy.com. Yep. This was our were... placeholder image before we launched. Yes. No one would have gone there. No. <laughs> <laughs> in 99, 2000, yeah. So, um, so what, what that first miniseries was, was published by Image in, in 1995, and it featured, um, like I said, covers by Alex Ross, character designs by Alex Ross, but in, interior pencils by Brent Anderson, who I'd never heard of, <laughs> who I came to love from his work in, mm -hmm. uh, in Astro City. Um, and it was, I think it was like a five or six issue six. miniseries, six issue miniseries, and they were one and done issues, focusing on different characters, little snapshots. It was, it was almost an anthology of different stories and different characters from this world. The cool thing about it was that they were all intertwined and there, there was a mythology and a history and everything and a map. And not only that, <laughs> yeah, there was a map, but not only that was they, they were all kind of intertwined and stuff would be happening to the left and the right of the story that would be referenced. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, would, and I don't, I've only realized this 15 years later, very subtly, the seeds were sown for all the stories that have been told up to this point right. in those five issues. So he did some amazing plotting early on. Uh, just totally amazing. Totally. I'm, I'm surprised that, Josh, that you like this so much because normally you hate anthologies. It, but it isn't, it isn't an anthology. The first, the first the six first, this is an anthology. Are pure okay, anthology. But they're each yeah. so good that it didn't, like they were a complete story mm -hmm. yeah. in a thing, you know, and they were each really good. Now, now, when you talk about how that first issue blew you away, it was. Yeah. I think still the first. The first issue is still the best one. The of, first issue of Astro City is the best, probably the best single issue out of all of these. It's one of the best single issues that I've ever read in my life. Yes. Um, because we've read Superman stories. We've read a billion Superman stories, and it's it's a reimagining of Superman. He's not exactly Superman. It is this weird combination of Silver Age, Golden Age, and Modern Age. Yep. Crossroads. Yeah, and it all yeah. comes together in this really 
interesting picture of what Samaritan's life is like for one day. Yep. And and what you got is he works as a research, He's research a fact, checker. A fact checker in the newspaper, and that allows him the the ability to come and go as he pleases, and he. And it's just frankly going around the world. He's got he's got all the radios, and he hears yep. when the dangers happening. He's different. He can fly. But he's different powers than Superman. Mm -hmm. He's got that like net type thing. Yeah. His whole origin is basically he came from the future to stop a disaster, and then he got stuck here. When, yeah. and, when he fixed yeah. it. When yeah. he fixed it, and his set, family and, was erased in the future. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then and became and became the superhero Samaritan, which and, is and, you know, and and he doesn't have a life. Yeah. But the most beautiful thing about the first issue is is he it starts with a dream. He's yep. dreaming. He's sleeping, and he's dreaming about flying. Having just soaring through the air. He's yep. naked, but that's not important. He's just flying. <laughs> and you think, well, what's the big deal? He flies. Mm -hmm. But through the course of the issue, you realize he doesn't ever get to enjoy flight. Right. And he, yeah. He's like, one disaster, one disaster the next, he flies for two seconds. Yeah. Sort of 30 like, seconds. Like, imagine if you used to really like going to comic book conventions. <laughs> but you never get to go and just enjoy them anymore. Yeah. But, but it's, it's, just, it's that all he wants in the world is just to be able to fly without mm. purpose, mm -hmm. yeah. without having to go somewhere to save somebody. And, and through the issue, he's tracking how long his flights are. Fly yeah. from the tornado to this robbery, three seconds. Yeah. Right. And it, by the end of the day, it's like, oh, it was a good day. I flew for 38 seconds. Yeah. And it was like, all he wants it's in the, the world is just yeah. to yeah. soar without, without worry. And it was just so beautifully constructed. And, and it's just uh, like a very, like, it's a different take. Like, it, the thing is, a lot of this, we were talking about this, a lot of this is just archetypes. I mean, like, if you look through, this is the, oh, this, is, this is the trade of, this is trade life in the big city. This collects that first miniseries. So you've got the Samaritan story, which is the Superman archetype. Mm -hmm. Then there's a story about Silver Agent, which is a the old a reporter writing about a, a older hero who, mm -hmm. you know, that, that something happened and there's Just a history. Whole with, history. It, it gives you the sense of history. Then you get a story about uh, the first family, which is like the Fantastic Four, four of right. them. Then you get a story about Jack in the Box, which is kind of like the street level character. He's almost yeah. Batman. He's yeah. not, because yeah. conf Confessors. We'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, right. oh, yeah, okay, we'll he's he's more like Daredevil. Th then, I guess. Yeah, he's more like Daredevil. Then you get, then you get a story about Wing Victory, who's more like the Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. Then you get the story about Cracker Jack, which lays the groundwork for a later storyline. Mm -hmm. yep. And then the last issue of the bookend is Samaritan and Winged Victory going out on a date. Where like their superhero team said, you two need to take a night they off. Forced them. Yeah. They forced them yeah. to go on a date. Which ties into his him not living. And, yeah, and, like, she has and, the same problem. And so, so it touches... And then they don't get along. Yeah, so, they do and they don't. Right. They do and then they don't and then they do again. Right. So it touches on all of these archetypes, lays the groundwork, but then also does it in a way that's so unique and so unlike any anything that I had read at the time. We talk a lot about how Marvel and DC books can get so mired yep. in their history and their continuity. And what this does is it frees Kurt Busiek to just explore the archetypes without the baggage. But mm -hmm. now, but what's interesting though is that he has the baggage, but, but he's controlling baggage. the baggage yes. as it's released, which is to this, is it makes it richer. Yeah, exactly. But totally. it's again, it's it's just yeah. his story where no yeah. one else. He just can look at the stuff, and it's so it's so focused. This is so much a single voice. Yeah. I mean, there's there's like three guys working on it, but still. So, it's called Kurt B.C. Astro City yeah. for yeah. a reason. So he wraps up that miniseries like by 1996, and then Astro City goes away. And when I, we come back from the break, I'll tell you about when it came back. Thanks to Netflix for sponsoring this episode of iFanboy. With Netflix, you can rent over 100,000 titles online with free shipping both ways to your home. They have over 40 shipping centers, so almost all deliveries happen within just one business day. If you have an Xbox 360, they're streaming to that. If you have a PlayStation 3, then you can get Blu-ray titles. So there's all sorts of ways that you can use Netflix. The Netflix plans start from just $4.99. As a new member, you can get a free, no-risk, two-week trial. Check it out at www.netflix.com slash iFanboy, and don't forget to use that www when using that code. So then in the late 90s, before Jim Lee uh, broke away from Image um, to, and, and sold it to DC, um, Imprints. He, he launched an imprint <laughs> under, under um, Wildstorm called Homage Comics uh, that it, it had a couple of uh, launch titles. It was supposed to be a creator-owned, which mm. is kind of creator-owned inside of a creator-owned, yeah. but it was separate from the Wildstorm universe. And what it was was that he, he launched with, uh, he got Terry Moore to do Strangers in Paradise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He got uh, Paul Smith and James Robinson to do Leave It to Chance. Leave It to Chance. I've yeah. heard of it and I've yeah. never yeah. seen yeah. it. Paul Smith. Uh, and um, and Kirk and Kirk Sex Astro City. And what we got was we got an ongoing of Astro City. I was so happy. I was so excited. <laughs> um, so when it came out, it started, and these are my issues. I went to the back and I pulled I pulled them from the from the from the storage unit. I have this um, sealed with a certificate of authenticity. <laughs> um, it won an Eisner, by the way. In, in it won a lot of Eisner. Well, Eisner won Harvey stuff like that. So um, when the series launched, we kind of got an initial kind of um, first you know a, a first kind of you know laying the groundwork issue. Then we got a little mini three story arc about the first family, which was good, which was all right. Well, yeah. just just but, to hold on, just. 
it was the Eisner one. It won Best Continuing Series. It won Best Cover Artist. It won Best Single Issue. So yeah. it, 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 it that, the it year out. it came out, it, it knocked out the Eisners. Yeah. yeah. So um, it started off kind of nice. And I remember like, oh, this is great. I love this series, whatever. Issue but five. Then issue five knocked me on my ass. Yeah. And what we got was we got a, was it a six issue story arc or so? It was Five an extended, issues. Extended story arc. I'm awful with numbers. Um, <laughs> an, an, an extended story arc focusing on the character of Confessor. And this. And Alter Boy. And his, his sidekick, sidekick Alter, Alter Boy, Boy, which sounds lame as shit. And this might not. be, with no hyperbole, no completely serious, one of the best story arcs, single stories ever told in a comic book that I've ever read. Like, hands down. Like, it's, it, it's amazing. It's up there. Yes, it's definitely up there. Um, and there's another twist to it. We'll get to that after you, we go yes. throughout it. But this is the Batman character, and the Batman and Robin character of, this, of the story. And it's, and it's um, <clears throat> what is great about it is it goes in many different directions that you didn't expect from the first yep. issue. And, it's, and, it, and it stays consistent with the, with the uh, narration device. What you've got is you've got the, the kid um, who becomes Alter Boy. You find out he moves to Astro City. He grew up somewhere in the Midwest or somewhere where there's not heroes. Dreaming of the heroes. His father dies. He moves to the city, try to make a name himself, become a hero. And this is his kind of his story of how he does that. Mm -hmm. And then and then it goes. Well, we have to kind of get into the weirdness. Sure. This Josh is, pointed this out, and I didn't. I upon rereading, you're not okay, wrong. Okay. So the groundwork was laid in the miniseries. No, no. That, okay. What happens in this is the mayor starts to act kind of strange. There's a thing that happens in the miniseries, lays a seed for this if you were paying attention. The um, mayor kind of acts sort of strange and he decides to start. There, there's a series of murders in, the, uh, in, the, in Shadow, Shadow Hill, Hill, which is the mystic the, town, the, part of town. It's the immigrant section, basically. Yeah. But also where all the monsters and demons yeah. live. And people are afraid to go to Shadow Hill. Um, it, more people are getting killed, more people are getting killed. And the mayor says, you know what, we're going to register our superheroes. Yep. Sound familiar? Everybody has to Get registered. come in, register your name. Um, worried about privacy, the, the information leaking out. If you don't register, we're going to send the police some after Some of the heroes rebel. And it, well, it, start, it starts with uh, uh, heroes with mystic powers <laughs> need to register. Then, it, then it, he steps up everybody. everybody. Yeah. Either way. Yep. That's Civil War. Yep. It is. Um, <laughs> it's Civil War. I'm going to go ahead and, and tell you what happens. This is, not the, this is not the main reveal of the story because that happens later. They we're going to reveal that too. It doesn't matter. Because you, you can still read it. You know, I, we, we'll reveal it. You but don't you, have to. Okay, we won't. Just that. don't. Right. Right. Um, uh, and then the second half of that is you find out that the reasons are going on is the mayor is part of an alien shape-shifting invasion force <laughs> that is trying to that is trying to discredit the heroes, discredit the heroes, the heroes. so that they can take over. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, in this five-issue story arc, they do civil war and secret invasion. But ten years ago, in five issues. <laughs> and, and beautifully. Um, so it's up to confessor now we're and not alter boy. Accusing anyone of anything. No, no. no. but. It is a little shocking upon it's, rereading because I reread this for the show and I thought, "Wow!" I, and, I know. and now, now what's what's totally fascinating is that the registration and the invasion are all subplots to the main story. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Which the main story is is that the kid who becomes altar boy take, gets brought under the tutelage of, of the confessor, who's mysterious, uh, mysterious, and, lives in a, a cathedral and works at night and all this kind of has the confession he's there. A, the he's, a con, there he's, like, a con, he's a he's a he's a Catholic themed Batman. Yeah. yeah. And uh, which works much better than you would think. And it's really good. And we find out more about his origin and who he is and where he came from. And then eventually something happens to him and, and he get, his secret gets revealed and then it, the boy becomes a man. Yeah, go, go but, get that trade. Yeah. But upon rereading, yeah. you're like, wow, there's a whole two Summers of Marvel events in those five issues. In five issues. issues. And, and not just a little bit, a lot. Now, yeah. this, now this was... I'm, it's all coming back to me. When this came out, we were in college, yes. and I remember it was like, "Is the next issue out? Is the next issue out?" Like, seriously, because it ends on cliffhangers, and yep. it, like, and it was like, "Oh my god!" And, like, did you read that? Oh my god, it, yep. it was great. It was, felt uh, like that, and it feels like that if you read it right now. Yeah. So this you can get in trade paperback as well. It's called Confessor or Confession or whatever it is. My favorite, one of my favorite stories of all time. I can't, I can't. Again, not about. accusing anyone of anything. Yes, no, no not just at saying. All. No, just saying. Remarkably, it, it is a, it is a cla like it is when you think about classic comic book stories yes. like Craven's Last Hunt. Yes, or or you know. Confession. Days. He's right there with it. Yeah, Days, Days of Future Past. Past. Yep, yep. I was trying to think of a yep. DC version. I couldn't. Yeah. Yeah, you may know one. Dark Knight Returns. Like literally, yes. Yes. it belongs. Oh, absolutely. In that pantheon of Hands stories, down. and I and I don't want it to feel like we're totally gushing about it. But even going back and reading these comics now, I haven't read them in in eight ten years. Blew my mind. I read them last week. Blew my mind. Yes. They, yes. They're amazing comics. Could, that's the great thing about the eight to ten year layoff. It's all new again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It really is. I had to read all five issues in, in one sitting. I couldn't. I, I couldn't read. Them I read. Yeah. A lot of these. We for the show. I read yeah. this in one sitting. I read these in one sitting. I read yeah. the first, this trade in one sitting. Yeah. I just. I mean, you can't stop reading these books. It, it was, it was such exciting comic books. There was such love. 
put into these issues and yep. so, love oh. and fought too. I mean, it, it, it doesn't work unless he has this whole arc plan, mm -hmm. yep. not just the, the one arc like this, but the whole arc plan. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about what happened after the confession. This episode of iFanboy is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. Web hosting from GoDaddy.com includes 99.9% .9 uptime, 24-7 support, and free access to Hosting Connection, the place to install over 30 free applications sure to help you get the most from your hosting plan and website. If you want to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has what you need. .com names for as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much, much more. Please support our sponsors by checking out GoDaddy.com and using the coupon code IFANBOY to get 10% off your purchase and to let them know that we sent you. Now, before we get to the rest of the stories, I still want to focus on that whole idea of the craft and everything bringing it in. It's so... Uh, Astro City itself as a city, like it's ne like in, when you read DC, the made-up cities, it's like oh, yeah. Metropolis is, is Chicago and Gotham's New York and whatever you want to do. Astro City never feel like sometimes it feels like San Francisco, sometimes it feels like St. Louis, sometimes it feels like yeah. New York. Like there, it's it's such a it's such a crossroads of all the things that we know about comics, and it's such like a love letter to comics. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one part of a, what makes well, it so special. That too. Right? I mean, like every every name in the city is is an old creator. Yeah, you know, like yeah. Fantino's yeah. costume shop and Jared. Uh, Jerry Robinson in the Confessor storyline because it's yeah. Batman, Jerry Robinson's this college the kid goes to, yeah. and every name, you know, Schuster Avenue, and every, he's, you know, Busick is famous for loving yeah. comics yeah, exactly. and everything about them. So this is like his love letter to superhero yeah. comics. So after the Confessor storyline came out, admittedly, I don't think it ever reached that level again, but it's still been awesome. There is, yeah. because what he did, he went back to sort of the short story one anthology ones. format. Yeah. Where we we met a bunch of different people. We spent a little time with Jack in the Box, who this character I actually always really liked a lot. Um, he's kind of ridiculous. Like he's got these, to he's like a toy theme Jack in the Box. He's got these springy clown, long yeah. things, and he bounces around and he right. fights crime on a street level, and yeah. you know works for the kids in the neighborhood and does that. And then there's a whole lineage thing that happens with him, similar to a lot of the sort of DC type of stuff that happens. Um, there's a really nice story with him and the 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 guy who um, the old man uh, yeah. and and he he wants very badly to be a known criminal. Well, he, this the, this story in this one issue, he robs a bank. He's successful. He, he out with everybody. Gets away. He's living in like Brazil, I think, with two million dollars. Yeah. yeah. And he's bored because no one knows he did it. So right. he goes back and blows it off from. A big theme of Astro City is the public facing of the heroes and villains and the and the the fame that comes with it yeah. or doesn't come with mm -hmm. it and like the and the the pressure Junk man. and stuff Junk like man. that. Junk yeah. man. So um, I actually really really like the one shot format because I like yeah. that you know. Not just let's turn the camera here, but here's one story. In the background, you see this character, and then the next issue, there's that character. Right. Or you, the guy runs past the restaurant with the, with the lion on it, and then four issues later, you we know mm -hmm. about we find out about what's the deal with that restaurant. Yeah. yeah. And that's it, what's the great about the structure of it. Yeah. Uh, and then and then you you go to the the, the tarnished angel story, which is sort of the first the second long story that and he did. And this is also available in trade you can still get as well and it focuses on Steel Jack who's this kind of um, this guy who, this low level villain who's all steel mm -hmm. and he gets out of prison after 20 years and he's trying to go live a straight life and realizes that it's hard because everybody sees him as a villain they know he's mm -hmm. a felon and like and it's easy to get pulled back into the old you know yeah. into the old game and, yep. and all that kind of stuff. I feel like I've is, read since then. Like I feel like yeah. they've, they've retreaded this stuff in like Daredevil. Or, well, or, or criminal, or, or so, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, or yeah, civil yeah. war. It's, 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 <laughs> Just saying, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, maybe they go to the Marvel summits with the big stack of Astro City books. Yeah, <laughs> but um, Tarnished Angel was it was a really really good arc, and after that arc, things kind of, they did a couple of one shots here and there, but then it kind of petered away. Um, well, and Busey, all sorts of reasons. Busey was working on other stuff. He had health problems. Uh, well, he had, and he was on Avengers at this time. Yeah. And Avengers took up a lot of his, his his focus. But Astro City was always kicking around there in the background. And so they, they did a, a special here and there. But then um, in 2004 or so, 2005, uh, they launched into uh, what is going to be end up being a 16 issue. Uh, tale uh, called the Dark Age, which again was referenced to in the miniseries, mm -hmm. um, where at some point there's a couple throwaway lines where they're like, "Oh, you think it's bad now? Way back in the '70s when yeah. things were bad." And this, this is, is telling 70s. that time in the '70s, and and starts off with uh, the sil you know, the downfall of Silver Agent, and goes and follows these two brothers. One's a cop, Silver and one's a like, criminal. Like they're Captain America. Yeah, yeah, right, so, yeah. yeah. And he got he uh, the whole awful thing happened in the '70s, which you go read. Um, you can get the first the, the first uh, trade of that is out. Um, that one, uh, they're just getting ready. Uh, th this summer, uh, book three of the Dark Age is coming out. Book four is already done. 
Right. And what well, they, book three, is, book three has already started. Yeah, yeah, already book three, the, yeah, the yeah, first issue yeah, already. Yeah, exactly. And um, and in between the Dark Ages books, they're doing on one shots. There's a one shot on Samaritan, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. There's a one shot on Beauty, which is like the Barbie doll character. Yeah. And then there's gonna be a one shot in between three and four. And then the great thing is that um, I read an interview with Kirpisek, and they're saying, all right, well, is there an end to Astro City? Like, there's an end to Y mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And he's like, no, this is the, <laughs> this is a universe. This is you know, it's a city and, it lives. And I would like to right now start asking you to donate money so we can just pay Kirpisek to do this for the rest of his career <laughs> because I you know Trinity was alright and, and all the uh, all the stuff he does is alright Aquaman was alright just do Astro City Kurt please it's a plea to you <laughs> just do Astro City it's all I want it's all uh, it's, it would make me so happy there's more Dark Age coming up so you're gonna get that and then yep. he's gonna keep going presumably for yeah because I mean, there's no ending so he'll just keep you know yeah uh, the funny thing about this is it's always been exactly the same team. Yep. Brandon Brand Anderson, Anderson has always been, done the yep. pencils on everything. He yep. was being inked for a while, but now he's inking himself. It looks a little different. Um, Comicraft has done the lettering. It started off with Star Kings and then J.G. Yeah, Rochelle. You know the early... Uh, this is a nerdy comic book yeah. stuff. But the early lettering in this comic was oh, they, amazing. They did fonts for, specifically for it. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was, uh, it was great. And, and Alex Ross has done every cover I, and every character design. Well, one of the yep. best things about the trades is that you've got a lot of back matter where they talk about the character designs, the yep. city designs, where they got the ideas for this person, how this person should look. You see how the, the evolution... Alex Ross designed all the characters. And I think these are great character this, designs. This, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, not a, I'm not a big Alex Ross fan. I, I love these covers. I love these character designs. I love everything Alex Ross has done for this series. Yeah, so I mean, been, there's some yeah. great looking... Super, and again, we said earlier, when's the last time you had a bunch of new characters that you thought were that hit home runs? Right. And, and I, can, I can go through them name all the cool ones. The Gentleman. That's yeah. awesome. Gentleman. Cracker Jack. Yep. Uh, you know, Hang, uh, Hooded Jack. Not Hooded Jack. That's, that's <laughs> no, fucking one. The Hangman. The Hangman. Yeah. Hangman. The uh, rapier guy. The black yeah, rapier. The black yeah. Rapier. yeah. And, uh, Cleopatra. Like there's just, all different stories. So and great. There's it, a speedster. That, I mean like it's, it's got everything. MDH. You like. It's okay. like if you like comics and you don't want to worry about the continuity and all the crap, just pick up the first volume of Astro City and, and just go off from there. You, you could actually pick up The Confessor. Any of them. Yeah. You well, you can, without having yeah, read anything. Any else. of them really yeah. could be picked it's up. It's one of the yeah. few comics that you could pick up. You could pick up a trade or one of the one shots and not need to know anything. Mm-hmm. They give you a little recap. It's perfect. As so. good as superhero comics get. Yeah. So uh, if you want to send us an email and tell us what you think, you can uh, send it to contact at ifanboy.com. And you can give us a voicemail at 888-FANBOYS, which is 326-2697. Leave us a message to talk about this. And go to ifanboy.com where you can check out the discussion about this episode as well as all, all of our other video episodes, all the other great posts and articles there. And that's also where you can donate to the Kurt Busiek Fund so that we can get um, him focused on this. Don't do that. <laughs> no, we're kidding. <laughs> you will confess! <laughs> See, the key to doing this is pressing record. Mm. That's how you, know, you capture the magic. No one told Wait, you me hit that. you record? Yes, I did. We lost that whole epic show that we recorded with Dan Didio and Joe Casada. <laughs> Making up and... Yeah. They make out a little Yeah, which yeah. yeah. got a little weird. Honestly, yeah. a little uncomfortable.